It is 1791, three years after the start of the French Revolution. Unbeknown to Napoleon Bonaparte, 7,000 kilometers away from Paris, unexpected uprising begins. The Haitian Revolution. Having grown tired of over three centuries of the worst form of oppression, African slaves in the prosperous French colony of Saint-Domingue, which is now Haiti, begin a brutal revolt against the white plantation class. So today, we'll explore Haiti, the first black nation to successfully revolt against the unholy trinity of colonization, slavery, and white supremacy. On January 1st, 1804, Haiti became the first independent black republic in the world and the first to abolish slavery. At the time, Saint-Domingue was the most profitable of all French colonies, exporting 60% of the world's coffee. Not to forget that it was the sugar capital of the world. For a brief time, Saint-Domingue annually produced more exportable wealth than all of continental North America. The revolt which lasted until 1804 was the first successful uprising that culminated in the overthrow of the French as well as the birth of the first world black republic. As for its repercussions, the uprising sent shockwaves throughout the world and optimism for the colonized and enslaved peoples, catapulting the end of the transatlantic slave trade and the, the end of French rule in the Western Hemisphere. French domination was effectively quashed following the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. So how did the French end up holding this tiny Caribbean island hostage for 300 years? And what exactly triggered this gargantuan revolution? In the centuries following the arrival of Christopher Columbus in Haiti, diseases killed both the natives and the European settlers, leaving the island devastated and lacking in human capital. Remember, there was also the mass massacre of the indigenous people of Haiti, who were predominantly the Arawak and the Caribbean Indians. Anyway, the settlers resorted to what every European power was good at the time, slavery. What perplexes me to this day, however, is how Americans still celebrate Columbus Day knowing very well the first he did not discover America. It's preposterous to claim, quote-unquote, discover people that have been indigenous to this land for millennia. Second, Columbus was not only the first person to ship the first slaves in and out of the Americas, but he was also in charge of the first five voyages. Anyway, now back to the Haiti Revolution. Starting from 1505, Tens of thousands of black slaves were brought to Hispaniola, which was the name Columbus gave to Haiti as a tribute to the Spanish monarchs that sponsored his voyage to the New World. Many of those slaves arrived from the slave coast of West Africa and Central Africa, while the rest was simply transferred from other Caribbean islands. After gold was depleted, the French turned the island into massive plantations of coffee and sugarcane. Thus, they need to import thousands upon thousands of slaves who were apparently treated worse than animals. At the peak of slavery on the island, the slaves outnumbered their masters 12 to 1. Haiti had a population of about half a million, with 90% of the populace being slaves. By the way, stick around as I will be telling you the story of Toussaint and Desaline, who, in my opinion, are some of the most underrated generals of African descent. So what caused the revolution? The answer here is threefold. First and worst was the sheer level of brutality unleashed upon the slaves. Enslaved Africans were subjected to back-breaking labor, harsh punishments, and a life devoid of dignity. Second was the growing frustration of the mixed race population, who are also known as mulattoes. They wanted equal rights to the European settlers. 
The much dreaded class system in Haiti meant that the mixed race was never recognized as equal to the French. In fact, free people of color were required to stand up in the presence of the colonists. As you might imagine, they did not take it well, and thus the revolt. Third was the idea of equality and liberty that stemmed from Napoleon Bonaparte's successful French Revolution in 1789. When the news of Napoleon's triumph reached the shores of Haiti, the furious mulattoes cast their law to their fiery slaves. Two years later, on the night of August 27, 1791, the revolution begins. In a voodoo meeting at the Boys Cayman, a thousand slaves under the leadership of Bookman, a voodoo high priest, unleashed terror on the enslavers in Saint Domingue. The usual cloud of deep darkness and deathly silence that shrouded this island by midnight was replaced with gargantuan frames of fire and screams of terror. Many of the slave owners were killed. In just ten days, the guerrilla fighters were in charge of the northern regions of Saint Domingue. In the following weeks, the revolt swelled into 20,000, and the goal was simple, to destroy this caste system that had suppressed them for centuries. Over a thousand coffee farms were destroyed, and over 200 sugar plantations burned to the ground. However, Bookman, the head of the rebellion, was captured and beheaded on November the 7th of 1990, 1791. His head was put in a spike as a warning to the rest of the slaves. This further spurred the revolt with the number of slave revolts doubling in a blink of an eye. By 1792, a third of Saint Domingue had been liberated. Soon enough, the winds of war would enter the Port Prince, the capital of Haiti. Then enters to sound Louverture, a man who fought of three empires and enraged Napoleon. Toussaint was born in slavery in the 1740s. He, however, used his education and enterprising nature to buy himself out of bondage. He was an exceptional intellect and a given, gifted military man with tactical brilliance and unwavering commitment to justice. Then in 1793, Britain sent a fleet of ships to Saint Domingue, hoping to conquer the nation. They were devastated by diseases and the relentless slaves under Toussaint's leadership. By August 1798, the British were forced to sign a treaty to complete withdrawal. And by the end of the war, the British had suffered 95,000 deaths, numbers than had before, more so in a slave colony. Toussaint came to be known as the Black Napoleon for his astute military skills and bravery. Ultimately, he proclaimed the first Black Republic in 1801. You'd think that this was the end, but no, it wasn't. Napoleon Bonaparte was furious about losing his richest colony. Consequently, the stage was set for a tug of war between Toussaint and Napoleon. Both men sharing humble beginnings, a showdown was imminent. In 1801, in coordination with the US President Thomas Jefferson, Napoleon dispatched a large expeditionary force to Saint Domingue. It was led by his brother in law, General Charles de Clark. The French were better equipped, forcing the Asians to change tactics. The former slaves retaliated through guerrilla warfare and scorched earth tactics. They burnt towns and plantations, but the Asians also lost way more people and suffered several defeats. Although the French surrendered in the Battle of Crete in March of 1802, Toussaint's rule was, however, faced with turbulence as former slaves were forced to continue farming lands for export. They wanted to grow food crops rather than exports. He says sent the former slaves back to their farm, something that left them disgruntled. As such, on May of 1802, Toussaint was forced to surrender to the French army. He was tricked into a meeting and arrested. In the ship transporting him to France where he met his eventual death, Lavoche says, In overthrowing me, you have done no more than cut down the trunk of the tree of black liberty in Saint Domingue. It will spring back from the roots, for they are numerous and deep. He died in 1803 under French imprisonment. General Leclerc promised to re not restore slavery in Saint Domingue. Well, as you might have established by now, nothing in this revolution was set in stone. Napoleon reinstated slavery immediately, and soon 
the Haitian forces took up arms again. This time though, another revolutionary was rising. His name was Jean Jacques de Saligny. By the time de Saligny's forces were rejoining the battlefield, Napoleon's forces had been devastated by tropical diseases, making it impossible to put down the revolt. The death of the French General Leclerc in November of 1802 did not make things any better. Besides, Napoleon had lied to the Polish forces that they were putting down a rebellion only to find the reinstatement of slavery. Consequently, the Polish militia numbering 5,000 switched sides, joining the Haitian forces in a revolt against the French. Most of the whites were not spared. In the Battle of Vatiaris on November 18, 1803, the final showdown was imminent. The Haitian fighters employed a range of weapons including muskets, machetes and other improvised tools of war. They often made use of their knowledge of the land and the support of local communities to launch surprise attacks and seize control of strategic positions. The French forces surrendered and the town surrendered to the British to avoid suffering humiliation and death at the hands of the Haitians. After more than a decade of battle, the Haitians won their independence, forming the first black nations of former enslaved people. Meanwhile, Napoleon abandoned his quest to conquer the Americas. In disgrace, he sold the Louisiana Territory dubbed the Louisiana Purchase Agreement of 1803. The Saline, alongside Toussaint, etched their names as two of the greatest military legends of their time. On January 1, 1804, the Saline and his lieutenants declared the independence of Haiti, a name derived from the indigenous Harawak people. Haiti has since been a haven for freedom fighters and escaped slaves. The triumph of the Haitian people stands as a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity and the power of unity in the face of oppression. Please like and subscribe. I'm all out guys. Take care. Koheri.